Chinese medicine, what exactly is it and how can it help you? Well, next on the 110th edition of the 1004 show, we got John McGarvey of Dow Labs. You guys can learn about them at mydowlabs.com. We'll have all that in the show notes as well. But John and I have a really, really incredible conversation we talk about really what Chinese medicine is. A lot of it, you guys probably don't know um, what it is and how it can help you, how he's created a business from this and how it really happened because he went through a really terrible challenge in his life on Thanksgiving many, many years ago. We talk about his routines and how fitness and health are so important in him growing his business and also having a better family and just feeling all around better. So without further ado, John McGarvey, Dow Labs, but spelled D-A-O, Dow Labs, John McGarvey, take it away. So John, health, fitness, they seem pretty important to you. Has it always been like that or is it something that just came about at a certain time in life? Oh, I think... To an extent, it was a means to an end. Um, I'm pretty type A, and um, I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty hard on myself at times when it comes to just physical fitness and goals and aspirations and whatnot. And so, uh, on the physical end of uh, the spectrum, you know, a, a solid workout routine has always been part of like what I do and what I what I is you know part of my 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 sort of just general routine because uh, it helps clear the mind um, and helps kind of assuage those uh, type A kind of tendencies and characteristics and whatnot. And on, on the health, that extends actually from, from family-related matters. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll get into sort of my, my current company, Dow Labs, but you know, digestive health is uh, something that is really important, is oftentimes overlooked uh, with, Western, uh, with Western consumers and, and, and people and whatnot. And my family has a, a horrible history of you know, digestive issues that are they're pretty aggressive. And so having just a, a strong health regimen, particularly with food, and food is definitely something that I struggle with, but just trying to eat the right things has always been in the back of my mind to uh, kind of avoid some of these hereditary sort of things that my parents have suffered from. So so it's a little bit of both. I, I mean, it's not as though uh, it's this this uh, intrinsic drive every day that I, I we were talking ahead of time that I, you know at some point I would love to uh, run the, uh, you know, run a marathon or, or swim the English Channel. But like, it's something I definitely have to push myself to do. And it's, it's a struggle. So it's just kind of part of the, the, the broader DNA of just making myself sane and, and, and I guess healthy. I'm always amazed at how much when I'm in a healthy kind of mindset, when I'm working out, how healthier my business is in that kind of case. Do, do you find that kind of as the same? Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, I, I want to say I'm a, uh, an aggressive or a, uh, an alcoholic or whatnot, but I, I can to use one specific sort of reference point or, or something that we can kind of all touch upon. It's, it's the times when I probably have one too many glasses of wine at night or, or, you know, uh, the, the last beer that I shouldn't have that, you know, it has an impact the next day. And I think that also coincides with when I'm working out, I don't drink as much, you know, um, as an example. And as a consequence, you know, I'm more mindful, I'm much more physical with things. And I've got just that drive to, you know, rather than just jumping out of bed to, to read the paper or something that I will go for a walk or I'll, I'll do right now. I'm in the midst of with my best friend from college, we're doing this push up challenge and, and we were trying to do, uh, wait for it, uh, 7,500 pushups in, um, in the month of April. And we both shot through that. So right now we're trying to do about 12,000 pushups a month. And so like, not to get too like uh, tangential right now, but like rather than getting out of bed and just like sitting around or reading or whatnot, like the ability then if I haven't been drinking or I'm in that sort of like workout sort of mode and whatnot, to, you know, I'll get out and, and, and do a couple hundred pushups in the morning. So, so you, you should try so it. You, you made me pull out the calculator. So 7,500 yeah. divided by 30 is about 250 a day. Yeah. And what are you doing now? No problem. 1,200? No problem. 12,000? We're doing 1,200s. So, but here's the thing is you got to binge. So on the weekends, you got to go hard where like you'll do, uh, I've done as many as about 1200 pushups in a day. And by the end of the day, you can't move. And the thing is you got to chunk it. All right. So like, cause you lose count really easily. Um, and I'm not sure this is what your listeners want to listen to, but I can tell you that if you do that many pushups on a monthly basis, it will change your physique. Uh, just ask my wife, but you chunk it. So like I'll do 30 and I'll do 20 cause you lose count really easily. And so you got to, you rather than always go into failure, you've got to like, 
you got to do it in these like intervals. So then you can like add it up later on and make sure you're not doing like, you know, one too many or you losing count because you will lose count. You get into like 700 push ups and like you would just lose count of how many you've done. So are you doing some like sort of when you're counting, you're doing some sort of check too. That's like, okay, this, this represents a 50, this is a 30, this is a 20, or you're just mentally oh, yeah. remembering that. No, no, no. I like, I'll chart them because then I also like, now we're getting really geeky. I'll try to see how many like is my max. And the most I can really do is like 60. And then I just, it just, it just fails. But then like, <laughs> and just ask my wife about this. Um, like I'll be in the middle of making dinner or something. Um, and I'll just like stop and, and drop and do like 30 right there, you know? And it's just like, she's like, what, what are you doing, dude? You know, but it's like, well, you know, it's all, it's all part of it. And some of that goes back to goal setting, you know, like if we're not measuring, we're not like marketing and that applies to ourselves as well. So, uh, how many did you start yeah. with that first month or how, like, I mean, 300 in a day, 250 in a day. I mean, that seems like a lot to someone. You can't do it. You got to like, uh, it's the opposite of tapering where you have to like start by just doing 20. And like, I assure you all, like when I started this journey in March, I started two weeks before the first of April and I was like struggling to, and I'm not joking. I was struggling to get 20, you know, and I'd get to 20 and, and you are so winded um, and you're exhausted, you know, and 20 becomes 40 and 40 becomes 60. And the next thing you know, you're hundred and you do reach a steady state and it ebbs and flows as well. Like you reach a steady state where you can bang out 200, no problem. And you should try this too. It, it, it's really cool. And then you get into these modes where it's just like, you know what, I'm shit. I'm going to do 500, you know? Uh, I, just, I just made a big bet with a friend who said I couldn't uh, lose a certain amount of weight by a certain amount of time. And, um, I think I'm going to have to implement or add something to my workouts to be able to do that. I yeah, think I yeah. definitely can do it, but I want to go further than that. And so I've been thinking, yeah. okay, am I going to do push-ups? Am I going to add sit-ups? Am I going to add something else? Maybe go back to, to weight because um, I don't really like to – well, I don't mind going to the weight room and everything like that. I'd rather I'd rather swim, um, yeah. kind of like you yeah. were talking about. So yeah. when you're um, – well, there's an app called 100 Push-Ups. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No. But, no. Um, it's just 100 Push-Ups. It's a free app. I've used that before. It helps you train to get to 100 and I think in 30 days. So that would be a good thing to do. So when you talk about that chart that you – so that you're geeking out with what, what is that? What is that chart? It, is that your own uh, spreadsheet or what? It, it is a Google doc that my friend and I, um, no, let me back up a second. This is my best friend from college. He's my best friend. He was my best man at my wedding. I haven't talked to him in months. Okay. So we just use a, um, we use a Google sheet that we share. Um, what's awesome is that we communicate through the sheet where we'll, you know, either uh, congratulate somebody or like motivate, or we'll talk about, you know, I, I, I ate like shit today, so I'm going hard, or I had to skip a day, you know, things of that nature. Um, so we just use a Google sheet and we communicate, you know, basically through it. Um, and he's very competitive and I'm equally as competitive. And so in some cases it's a matter of who went to bed later because we'll check the sheet. And it's like, if he's done like 420, like I'll, and, and I'm at like 400, I'll bust out 50 before I go to bed, you know? And, and so it's, it's good because it really, it drives both of you, you know, it's like you're putting the goal out there. It's a shared experience. Um, and if I skip a day or two, like I, and I don't want to say I'm embarrassed, but like I see him doing it. It's like, well, shit, I, I, I got to catch up, you know? So, so it's pretty simple. I, I think it's interesting. So I was telling you, I have a friend, sounds very similar to, to your friend. I haven't known this guy since college, but um, at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start working out again, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I'll go three days a week, four days a week, whatever. And then one day I was talking to him. He's like, yeah, I'm at day like, you know, 12 or 1300 of running straight of at least two miles up to, I think 30 miles a day, depending on yeah. what. And I was like, I don't think I needed, I don't think I need to take breaks. I think I'm just going to just go. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I will, I'm going to call him today after this. And I'm going to see if he wants to do the push-up challenge. Because he told me oh, a couple push minutes. Challenge awesome. He told me recently, he's like, oh, I need to lose a couple more pounds. Uh, he's super skinny, so I don't believe that. But, um, yeah, yeah. So you, you mentioned. This is no, I was just going to say, if I could, um, we, we were talking a, a ahead of the, uh, the call about how two years ago during a gap year, I, I walked 1,500 miles. Um, this is the same buddy that walked 1500 miles with me. And, and it was on, uh, new year's Eve where, uh, we were just like sitting around texting and I was like, what's, what's our goal going to be? Um, and we did it and like, it was the same drill, man. It, it wasn't my, it wasn't pushups. It was miles and we tracked it that way. And, you know, ultimately we achieved, um, you know, something that was pretty kind of remarkable in hindsight. Was that in one year, the 1500, was it 1500 miles in one year? Yeah. 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 Very cool. You mentioned that you're very type A. How do you define type, type A? Oh, it's uh, perfection over you know progress. It's beating yourself up. It's uh, um, the, the best is never good enough. Uh, when you've completed something, you look 
at it and say, you know, we could have done one more iteration and it would have been slightly better. It's just that that clinging to ultimately just like, God, I could just be, if I tried a little harder, I put more elbow grease into it, it could be one step better. And um, as as we've talked about, and I'll gladly share with your your anyone that's participated so far is, you know, I've I've rounded the bend and I turned the big 4-0 this year and, and I'm really trying to let go of a lot of those habits. But to, to answer your question, it's it's a lot of, of, of that type of stuff. Very cool. So you mentioned that digestive health is something that is something in your family that hasn't necessarily been the greatest of worlds. It's been tough. Uh, and that maybe you started Dow Labs for that reason or what? So I started Dow Labs for, for different reasons, but some of the, the things from my past like that are all part of the story of it. You know, it, it's um, if, if we want to get more specific on, on the digestive front, it was um, my father has a, a disease that is or a, an illness um, that that is very common in the West uh, called diverticulitis. And it's something that as our parents generation and as baby boomers, you know, go into their latter years, it, it's it's very serious. And, and we look at how the food sort of uh, chain and, and the, the, the types of foods that we're consuming and, and the way we're consuming them and, and the way that the food industry has evolved, um, illnesses like diverticulitis are going to become more and more uh, uh, common. And basically what it is, is you just get, you get an infection um, you know, in your digestive system. And, um, and, and we'll probably talk about Chinese medicine here in a little bit, but Chinese medicine, it, it's all about your digestion, you know, and it's about like uh, uh, organs of the body that we don't spend a lot of time thinking about it until it's too late, like the pancreas and the spleen and the kidney and whatnot. And so when I was in high school ish, uh, my father had a, a, a massive surgery that that's pretty common. It's not life threatening. Um, but it's extremely painful and it's essentially, you get pieces of your, your, your digestive tract removed and to get to your digestion, the digestive system, like you got to remove a lot of stuff to get there. And then you're basically taking out the infective arts and stuff that like, we don't really talk about, but it goes on much more common. And that's a, a, a process to recuperate from that takes, uh, you know, in some cases months and it's painful and all this type of stuff. And so I guess, to, to go back to it, Zach, ultimately, I, I, I just then and there realized, like, I, I don't want to have bad digestion because you can control all this through food. You can control all of it through diet. You know, of that, I, I am 100 percent convinced. And to make matters worse, um, he had it when I was in high school. And then the same thing happened to him when I was out of college. And it was like, here we go again. And then my mom got it. And so if you like start researching, you know, more about this disease, which, again, is very, very common. Um, it can all be controlled through diet. I mean, it, it, it can all be. And so I don't think it's coincidence that like my mom and my dad who have been eating, you know, in the, out of the same household for now 50 years have all of a sudden magically had the same thing. So I'm, I'm belaboring the point, but it was in the back of my mind always that, you know, we didn't, we didn't want to have, or I didn't want to have issues like this when I'm in the middle of my life. And so Dow Labs um, kind of embraces a lot of those characteristics, uh, or at least some of my personal biases as far as, you know, what, 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 what does John McGarvey want to achieve uh, from a health standpoint in life? And one of our products, and, and I'm speaking in a non-linear fashion as far as, you know, my story and the company is concerned, but we have, we have a digestive product that's incredible. Um, it's a, it's a formula that's uh, called Bao Hawan, which is a, a, about a thousand year old Chinese formula that's comprised of eight herbs that if you were to go to China, uh, again, like the Chinese take digestion very, very seriously. It's one of the best digestive aids and most widely consumed digestive aids over there. And it basically just settles your stomach and makes sure the, the process and everything that goes along with that is working the way we hope it will. And so uh, it happens to be our number one seller too. And and for good reason. It's just like, it's just a good formula to, to naturally like cleanse your stomach. So um, so that that's all part of it, I would say. Very cool. Now, if I remember the story correct, you were in Tibet when this, when, when you really started having the kind of idea of Chinese medicine or did I do uh, that? No, no, that, that's all part of it. Um, uh, I'm going to back up two steps and, okay. and I started taking Chinese as a language offering, uh, when I was in, in high school and I'm 
proud to say that I went to a public high school in Des Moines, Iowa. And back then, um, nobody was offering uh, Chinese as a language option. It was just uh, French, Spanish, and, and that was it. And, and my public high school offered Chinese as a language offering. And I went to China for the first time in 1994. And uh, as a kid from Iowa who had only gone to a border town in Mexico, going to Kunming, China, back then in particular, was just like so far out. And it was one of these experiences, Zach, that at the end of the day, it was it was very much life changing because here I am today doing something that still kind of is a is a direct descendant of that experience. And so I went to China very early on. I took Chinese throughout high school and college. I never studied abroad. I never lived abroad. And so in 2005, I was working uh, at a private equity fund in, in New York City, um, learning a lot, but it was just not what I wanted to do with my life. And my, my older brother, who had also taken the same sort of trajectory from a, a Chinese language experience, was actually living in Tibet after bouncing from Hong Kong and Beijing. And uh, he contacted me one day and said, hey, we're, we're he, he was in Tibet with a, an, an NGO, a non-government organization, and said, hey, we're, we're starting this microfinance lending program, and, and you'd be a perfect guy to help help lead it. And I literally got up from my cubicle, walked around the block a few times, thought about it, and the next day I, I, I quit. And a week after that, I was on a plane to Nepal, and a week after that, I was in Tibet. And so I, I actually lived in Tibet for about a year and a half um, with this organization. It was incredible. And to answer your question specifically, um, it was during Thanksgiving or just after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, um, uh, during that experience where I'd gotten just massively ill. And it was just like one of these things that's foregone. If you're going to live in that part of the world, at some point you are going to get sick from something. You so, ate. so you're in Tibet, you're getting sick from something yes. at this point. Okay. Yes. And, and we're not going to graphically describe that experience, but it was awful. Um, and it was, I know exactly what I ate and when I ate it. And next thing you know, I was like on my deathbed and, um, uh, long story short, I was treated by, uh, Tibetan herbs. Um, and Tibetan herbs, uh, sure, are part of Chinese medicine, and, and you could call them Chinese herbs, but they're herbs that are grown up on the Tibetan plateau. Um, and it was just one of these sort of experiences like, well, what, that's freaking incredible because, you know, typically in the West, we would prescribe, you know, a, a Cipro or something of that nature to, to annihilate something of, of, of that magnitude. And I was treated with, uh, you know, Chinese herbs, and that was sort of my first foray into the world of Chinese medicine. And you know, there's a lot of things we can talk about between then and now, but like here I am running a Chinese medicine company and, and I would say very much that experience contributed to sort of the, the motivation and the, 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 the rationale as to why like, Jesus, like this is, this is like, I can tell you firsthand that this stuff works and, um, and here we are. I think all of this is really important, right? And so I listen to and consume a lot of content and I feel like a lot of what everyone talks about is this pretty fluffy, like the world is great story. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. you know, I was talking about fitness and health before you going through this big problem like this is all of this leads you into this, this challenge that you that just happened to you and you weren't expecting on a on a day like Thanksgiving that you weren't expecting to do anything other than eating turkey. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of things that I have notes on now that I want to kind of talk with. Yeah. Um, and and. I think there's at least one person, if not multiple people in my family that have um, diverticulitis as well. Um, yeah. So when you say, you know, a lot of people have it, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, tell me if I'm if I'm wrong on this, too. So Shark Tank had something called Squatty Potty. It, does that right. really help with digestive health, too? Is that just some sort of, like, fake thing? Or, like, is that just, like, the last piece of it? Because I think that's maybe one of the first times it's actually gotten kind of globalized in front of a lot of people that, Hey, like digestive health is something important where a lot of people probably don't talk a lot about it. Uh, so the squatty potty product, I think, is that the one that's like the, you, you, you put it next to your toilet and yeah, it helps so with it your helps, posture. Yeah, yes. So yes. That, yeah. 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 And so, um, at the end of the day, like <laughs> you go to a retirement home and that's what it all comes down to. Right. Did you, did you take your daily and whatnot? And so like, so, so yes, um, to Chinese medicine in particular, as I said, like th there are all sorts of texts and I'm not a Chinese medicine doctor. My colleague is an, a, a extremely brilliant Chinese medicine doctor and we can talk about him here in a second. But what I can tell you is I've read more than the average bear as it relates to Chinese medicine and, and how this stuff works. And in Chinese medicine, it all starts in your gut. If your stomach is not 
flowing and working the way it is supposed to, then everything else gets cattywankas and out of whack. And so when you have something as, uh, like we're talking about with diverticulitis, that, that can lead to all sorts of other issues from a Chinese medicine perspective, you know? And so taking care of your gut and, and making sure you are regular and making sure you're eating the right things at the right temperatures, um, that's all very central to the way this whole beautiful um, um, uh, practice works. Very cool. Is there a way that someone can do a self-assessment to know like if your gut is in a good position or not? <laughs> um, well, obviously based on what I do, like we are big fans of acupuncture and acupuncturists. Um, and an acupuncturist would be able to make an assessment very quickly on your digestive health through uh, two, if not three ways. Uh, number one, they would look at your tongue. Number two, they would feel your pulse. And when they're feeling your pulse, it's not from the lens of how many beats per minute, but it is the energy of your pulse and they will feel both sides with multiple fingers. And then number three, there are some that are very good with um, the gut and being able to, to diagnose by just feeling around and asking you to respond to different feelings you're having um, in your sort of abdomen region based on how they're touching basically around your belly button. And um, I'm going to an acupuncturist right now here in um, Minneapolis who is kick-ass. Um, she's helping with the type A stuff that we talked about, but she's also very, very helpful when it comes to just gut health. And without basically doing much beyond the three things that I just described, she's been able to just, she's just nailed it. So um, so to, to, to listeners that, that um, have gotten this far and, and whatnot, like, this stuff is very powerful and it doesn't take a very invasive sort of like massive family history and blood work and all that kind of stuff, all of which is important. And I'm not like by any means disputing that, but Chinese medicine, if you get the right person helping you, like can be very powerful and very fast. So you don't need to do like a self diagnostic where you're like, okay, I'm not feeling good. Anyone should just maybe even go and get some sort of uh, self assessment like this from an acu, uh, an acupuncturist or how do you see that going down? Well, I think it comes down to, to just anyone can self-assess it just by what they're eating and what's coming out, right? And the frequency with which, a uh, fun topic here. But, um, you know, if that's, if, that's not, if that's out of whack, then go see a doctor yeah. and they'll get you moving. <laughs> Very interesting. So Chinese medicine. Yeah. We both live in America. What, what makes it different than what we know as medicine from America compared to kind of Chinese medicine? Oh, it, it's, um, first of all, it's a practice that's been around for 3,000 years. And it is very well established here in the United States, but in a very fragmented way. There are arguably, uh, statistically, whatever, uh, 40,000 acupuncturists in the United States. And some of them are, are doctors who are you know off the boat from China, so to speak, and others are uh, very well trained here in the U.S. And um, there's chiropractors that kind of moonlight in acupuncture and whatnot. So it, it is very, very much here. But when it comes down to it, it, it treats the whole body as opposed to just the, the problem or the symptom. Um, and so uh, I'm going to get over my skis here a little bit, and I don't want to come across as an authority or, or somebody who, who has studied this the way a, a, a good acupuncturist or Chinese medicine doctor has. But you know, rather than treating just the, the individual issue, they will, they, they look at it from a holistic global perspective of, of your constitution. And, and are you cheese uh, deficient? Are you, are you stagnant with your yin in, in terms that are incredibly esoteric? Okay. But if you get the right person who can translate them for you, they become, they, they become very easy to follow. Um, so, so on a high level basis, you, you treat the whole as opposed to the, the sort of like the, the, the individual issue. And then as a, kind of extends beyond that. It takes a look at things from, you know, not just uh, your, your, your food intake and what you're eating and the temperatures of your food and, and whatnot, but it's, it's your sleep pattern. Um, it's the, the mental aspect around um, your whole holistic sort of practice and whatnot. Um, and so when you, we get into to Chinese medicine, of course, you know, I run a, a company that is foundationally, we're, we're based on Chinese herbs, but you know, Chinese medicine includes acupuncture as well, which we can all kind of relate to, or at least we're, we're familiar with, but it's things like cupping, you know, last year, uh, two years ago, whenever the, the last Olympics were, we all remember Michael Phelps taking his, his shirt off and, and we saw the spots in the back. And that's definitely something that is, is, is trending more and more these days. There's things like moxibustion, which is basically it's, it's, uh, 
uh, uh, herbs that you would light on fire. Um, and they put them at various points of your body. And, and in some cases, uh, they can get, um, you know, a, a, a baby or a fetus that's in the wrong position before giving birth. Uh, it's widely used to get the baby to flip. Um, just by putting moxibustion on on uh, um, the mother's foot, um, it's things like tai chi and, and qi gong, which are beautiful practices. Um, tai chi is something that you know isn't widely practiced across the United States, and there's this romantic image of of older people in in the East doing it, but you're seeing it starting to do more and more, and it's a it is a mindful practice that's got a cardiovascular element as well in terms of stretching and moving and whatnot, and so you know. Western medicine has elements of this, you could say, um, but it doesn't have the sort of the, the whole lifestyle aspect around it. And um, that's what makes me quite, I don't want to say lucky to do what I do because it's a startup and it's stressful and whatnot. But um, as far as me embracing what this practice is all about, it, it, it's just so, it's so beautiful. And um, uh, you know, not to get too anecdotal, but I literally had to run to the Apple store before uh, this meeting because yet again, my power strip blew out. And so $85 later, which just kills me about apples and Macs, you know, I get a new power strip and the gal, as she was ringing me up, was asking me, like, what do you do for a living? And I told her and she's like, oh my God, she's like, we're treating my dog with Chinese herbs. And it's like, what? <laughs> and so it's just this thing. And that actually is very common. Um, and so it's just this practice that is, it's just got this beautiful history and it's got Again, this this uh, way of treating the whole and not just the the single issue, and um, and so I've probably answered your question well beyond what you were looking for. But that that's it in a in a nutshell. Have you ever tried cupping? I have tried cupping. What is that Absolutely. like? What is that? So I get a lot of massages. What, yeah. But, and I was going to go to this new therapist. Yeah. Um, but she canceled on me, and I was going to do cupping, but yeah, I haven't been able yeah. to do it yet because it looks awesome. I've watched a lot of like. YouTube videos on it. it looks looks ridiculous. Like, what is it like? Well, I think it's like what you would expect. Um, it, it depends on what your goals are and what you're going in there for. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do cupping. Like, you can go to Amazon and buy a cupping kit where you, you could do it to yourself and you get a little pump and you you kind of stick it on there and it basically will. You know, you're pulling a lot of blood into that area where the cup is sitting. Um, if you get a good doctor that knows what they're doing, they'll put uh, different types of smokes and herbs into the cup itself, which will then interact with the blood vessels um, that are being pulled uh, to the surface, which basically is what I think the, the type of, of treatment that Michael Phelps is getting that's a bit more intense. Um, but on the really intense end of the spectrum, I've been to several hospitals, uh, Chinese medicine hospitals in China, um, one of which was an oncology hospital in particular. And I, I saw a woman who was being treated for cancer and she probably had upwards of about 20 cups on her left shoulder and they were just like stacked, you know? And so there, there she was, and there's just all these cups and what that doctor was doing, God knows. Um, but it was part of her, you know, in this case, cancer, cancer treatment. So to, to answer your question specifically, it's not painful at all. Um, you leave the cup on for a while. Um, you definitely have marks all over, you know, the area in which it's, it's been cupped, but, um, the, the impact is, is incredible. I mean, it, like if it's joint relief that you're looking for in some cases, if they're trying to move your chi and your energy a little bit, um, you definitely feel it and you'll definitely have some marks, uh, you know, on that part of your body for a while. So I, I would check it out. I mean, reschedule or, or find somebody else. Cause it's, it's pretty cool. I, I definitely want to do it. So from a product line with Dow, what, what are some of the products that you guys have? How do you guys come up with your product line and, and stuff like that? Absolutely. So we're about a year old. Um, all of our formulas uh, are right now based off of very classic Chinese medicine formulas that have been around for a long time. And then what we do is we we adjust them a little bit based on sort of just, just trying to make them a little better, we think. Um, so we have four formulas right now. Um, and the whole premise with Dow Labs and what we're doing is we're trying to uh, take a, a practice. And like I said, Chinese medicine is tough. It's very, very esoteric. And um, in many cases, if you go to a Chinese medicine doctor, they'll give you herbs and you have no idea what you're getting. OK, because it's just like it's just the whole trust factor. And some of the herbs would take too long to explain. So our whole idea is to take these formulas and these herbs and make them easy to understand. OK. And the other issue on that sort of spectrum of it is um, 
a lot of the formulas will do multiple things. And if we go to our sort of marketing background, well, you can't say it treats your head and also treats your digestion. And it's like, <laughs> you're going to confuse the consumer who's already kind of skeptical to begin with. But um, what we've done is we've said, all right, these formulas traditionally have done these four things, but what's the one thing it's used for the most? And then we name we name it. So we have a, a formula called immunity support, which is uh, based off of this incredible formula called Yuping Feng Song, which is Jade Windscreen. And, and Jade is, is perhaps the best immune. It's, it's a formula for the best immunity support that, like, that money can buy. And so if we think of emergency or airborne or things of that nature, uh, those have nothing in terms of against what, what this formula can do. And and so we, we named it immunity support as opposed to calling it Yuping Feng Song. The other thing that we do, Zach, is Chinese medicine will never, ever, ever win awards for flavor. It just tastes terrible, okay? There's videos that you can, uh, uh, you know, see on YouTube and whatnot of like, um, you know, Anthony Bourdain trying to consume herbs. And it's just, it's awful, awful repulsive stuff. But like, you got to get past that because the efficacy is so incredible. And so our our vision is to make these things uh, slightly more uh, taste good, you know, more palatable, get them down the hatch because, you know, my background, I ran a food company before this and I can tell you that, you know, 65 plus re- uh, a percent of repeat purchases are, are based on taste. And so we want to make sure that like we're making it easier for people to consume. And then number three, it's, it's all about convenience, you know, in its purest form, herbs should be boiled and a concentrate is made and, and whatnot. And that, that's a very laborious process. So our, our formulas right now are meant to be consumed on the go. And so just add them to your, your water bottle, let them kind of work their magic with the water and, and enjoy them. And so we have uh, four products right now. Um, one is the immunity that I mentioned, obviously the digestive product, which is incredible. We have one called emotional uh, balance, which is based off of an incredible formula called Shao San, um, which is great for just making you like chill out and giving you mental focus and, and just really in the case of a Chinese medicine doctor, it's, it's kind of harmonizing your chi. Um, I probably take two to three of those a day and they are life changers. And then we have uh, uh, the final sort of product that's available now is our, our women's formula, which is all about um, replenishing blood after the cycle has ended. And central to Chinese medicine is this whole concept of blood. And, and blood is energy. Blood is your chi. Um, and this particular formula is based off of the most widely consumed formula in all of Chinese medicine in China. It, it basically reharmonizes and, and reestablishes her, her blood after the, the, the period has ended. And so those are our, our products right now. Next month, uh, June of 2018, to timestamp it, we are launching two sleep formulas that are absolutely incredible. And I've said that about all of our products, but like I, I believe it. Um, I we have two different... nothing less from you. Yeah. <laughs> our products suck. No, no <laughs> this one's not so good, but you like this one. Uh, um, the, the, we have two different sleep formulas. Um, as I mentioned earlier, sleep is central to, well, to all of us, but it's very important with Chinese medicine. Um, and you would ask, like, you know, what are the characteristics of, of me being a type A person? And um, I'm pretty good at waking up at 2 in the morning and beating myself up for stuff, you know, either that I didn't do or that is lurching around the corner or, you know, whatnot. And that's gone on, you know, for years, and that's what Catholic upbringing will do to you. Um, but in one particular case, um, this formula is based off of a, a in, awesome, awesome formula called Gwai Pitong, and um, it shuts up the gremlins that are in your head at 2 in the morning. Um, and it makes you, and I will swear on a Bible to this, it makes you wake up happy. And that's all I can say about that. You get, you get, you just feel happy. So, um, that's for one type of sleeper like me. And then the other one is for the hot, restless sleeper of which a lot of like, there's a whole sector of the population that can't sleep because they're agitated and they're irritable and they're too hot. And so we've got a a sleep formula that will just cool the body, cool the mind and cool the spirit. And, um, for those sleepers, we have people testing it right now. Um, they swear by it. So, so we got sleep coming out next month. Very cool. All right. So I have a bunch of like quick answer questions to about a lot of the stuff that you just said, um, kind of around the use cases. So consumption is always kind of powder into water form is how you see right this? now, right now, powder into water that will change over time. Okay. How much stuff is going into like, what is like a little bit of powder? Like, a? it's about nine grams. Okay, into like a normal kind of 20-ounce water bottle type of thing? Or... Oh, yeah, even less than that. Yeah, just add a scoop to your water glass. Got it. So, uh, I'm, and I'm also thinking of little words that might people might think about. So, this is not meal replacement in any kind of way? For any not of that meal stuff. replacement. So, uh-huh. you would still eat your normal meals that you think the diet should have and then use this as an enhancement to make your life Absolutely. better in this case? Okay. Absolutely. 
uh, rate of use for each of these? I know each of them could be differently, but one of them you said you use two or three times a day. Like how often should people be taking these? It, it entirely depends. It depends uh, on you know what your usage is. If you get on an airplane every day, you should be taking our immunity product for the sleep. You know, I'll go on and off of it, but when I'm off of it for a couple of weeks, I will just as quickly jump back on it because I will feel the difference. So, um, in that particular case, it's one scoop a day. Got it. Price range for this stuff? Uh, it all comes out to about a buck fifty a day. Oh, that's cheap. Is uh, FDA approval or anything like that in this? How does that work? It's- uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, herbal supplements uh, are still the wild, wild west of FDA uh, and FTC. So we err on the side of uh, being very conservative when it comes to legal claims. So the things that I have said, I, I try to be careful, and sometimes I do get over my skis as promising more than what they would do from an FDA standpoint. So there is clinical research behind this, but a lot of it still comes down to just the 25 year heritage of 2,500 year heritage of what this stuff does. But go to our website, mydowlabs.com, and like you will see the language that we use. And if you want to know more, give me a call, and I'll explain in a in, in a bit more liberal way. Very cool. You you keep using the word chi. What does that mean? Yeah, chi is energy. Chi is life. Okay. Uh, chi is is the central. It flows through your body. It's it's your energy. I love that. Uh, if someone um, has an alcohol problem or drinks a decent amount, can they still take these formulas with alcohol, or is that frowned upon? Um, uh, probably a purist would say we should probably get that taken care of first. Um, but I'm not saying I'm an alcoholic, but I have two little kids, and I run a startup, so I do enjoy some drinks from time to time, and I still take my powders every day. And you seem to be doing great. Um <laughs> If someone was interested in kind of Chinese medicine, is there like a good documentary? Is there something on Netflix that they could yes. could watch about this? Absolutely. There is a fantastic uh, movie that everyone should watch on YouTube. It's called The Mystery of Chi. Um, and they spell Chi on YouTube, C-H-I. It's a Bill Moyers documentary that was made in 1992, uh, which is getting older now, but it is still as relevant and appropriate today. It's about 47, 45 minutes in length. Uh, Bill Moyers goes over there, and the arc of, of the, the whole documentary is he's skeptical, but he is familiar with like this whole thing. And so he gets on a plane, and he goes to China to under, like explain and try to get an understanding of, uh, of, of, of what this is all about. He meets over there a gentleman by the name of Dr. David Eisenberg, who we've met. He's a professor at Harvard. Um, he was one of the original gurus, uh, as an MD to go over to China in the late seventies, early eighties to study Chinese medicine. And throughout this documentary, it's absolutely fascinating. It goes through all of the things that we've kind of touched upon from the herbs themselves, not being very flavorful. It talks about Tai Chi and Qigong. It goes into, uh, uh, an, an operating room where somebody's having brain surgery and she has uh, just been put under through acupuncture as opposed to Western anesthetic. Um, it's an incredible documentary and it's got some age to it, but it's still very, very relevant and it gets to the point real fast. And the, the, not to ruin the spoiler alert, but at the end, he's essentially like, I am equally as confused now, but boy, oh boy, I'm more a believer. So it's, it's cool. I, um, I love a good documentary. I'm on a documentary kick right now. Um, so I, I try to be super efficient. So I, I've been going to the gym as, as we've talked about, and there's, this bike that I've been riding that doesn't have a TV. Yeah. And like, I fall in love with this one bike. And so I'm like, Oh, well, I have an iPad. So I started watching kind of documentaries while I'm, while I'm working yeah. out. Yeah. And there's a lot of medicine stuff. So, um, I don't know if you watch a lot of documentaries, but there's stuff like, um, the whole opioid uh, crisis and Adderall yeah. and stuff like that. And so it's, it's very, very fascinating. So I'm very interested in checking out this, the mystery of Chi, um, as well. Um, yeah. Sounds really yeah, interesting. I would say this is a big movement, obviously, right now with the the, the on the topic of opioids, um, and, and obviously it's a crisis, it's a problem, and acupuncture can be a very, very good substitute for pain management, uh, uh, for opi- opioids for pain management, so uh, very topical. I, I had no idea what an opioid was until I watched this. I, I just was being stupid. I just thought it was a very different type of drug. I've actually taken some of them from some of my injuries in the past, and I remember one of the ones was like Oxycontin and I remember one of them I woke up from, I had torn three ligaments in my, in my ankle and on a random day I'm on Oxycontin about a decade ago, I wake up in a hot sweat to a lion chasing me. <laughs> and now there's this doctor apparently that, that prescribed a crap ton of these to people to the extent of like 40 to 50 pills a day. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was awful. like, oh, I can't imagine how many lions would be chasing me at that point. But, <laughs> but, but yeah. So do you think that the Chinese medicine has helped you with your knee issues at all? Or do you think that you can never fix that? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, I have never had my knee treated with Chinese medicine or attempted to. And basically the reason for that uh, has nothing to do with Chinese medicine. And it, it stems from a, a conversation I had with a, a orthopod about eh, eight years ago or so, where I went in to have my knee looked at after my wife had had knee surgery and, and she's a runner. Um, and uh, I went in there and, and, you know, sometimes uh, orthopods get that, that sort of uh, ring about them that they're always like, Hey, let's go have a surgery, you know? And um, so I went in there and, uh, was talking to the guy. I was like, yeah, I want to get my knee fixed. And, uh, cause I want to run again. And he's like, oh, why? I said, well, I want to be able to run. And he's like, well, why don't you bike? And I'm like, well, because biking is something I just don't do. And, and he's like, well, you don't have to run. You know, there's other ways to exercise. And he basically talked me out of not to like get on a, a, a rant about like running this bad or anything. Cause I'm not an expert at it, but he's like, yeah, there's, you know, better things you could do to get the cardiovascular goals that you want, as opposed to just beating yourself up running. And honestly, Zach, that was enough for me. And I was like, well, okay, I just won't run. Hmm. I do remember when with that torn ligament that I had, there's three torn ligaments. Um, they wanted to, to do surgery too. And I was like, mm, I don't really want surgery. Like there's gotta yeah. be some way, some other way to do this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very interesting that the whole world is very interesting. I'm super excited to do even more research on this type of stuff. Soylent was a pretty hot, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. It was a pretty Soylent, S-O-Y-L-E-N-T. It was a pretty popular Silicon Valley kind of powder meal replacement business. Oh yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And they're still around, I believe. I believe so. And so they were powder. Now they're, I think they actually have, um, already pre-made formulas and stuff like that. Yeah, like, they do. They do. When people hear about food-based items, uh, meal replacement items, diet items, Chinese yeah. uh, medicinal items to, to fix things, like the gambit is all over the place on, you know, some stuff is like super trustworthy, some stuff isn't. Like how does someone gauge the credibility of some of this stuff or, or understand that, you know, this might be able to help me, even though, I don't know, the FDA, the FTC hasn't necessarily approved it. Like, how, how do they get over that kind of yeah, that thought? Yeah, well, there, there's a couple of ways. Number one, um, again, if you go to our website, just based on my background with food and whatnot, this is an ingestible. It's starting in China. That's got a lot of strings attached to that in and of itself. So we just take testing really, really, really seriously. And you can read about the testing that we do, and we don't stop until like it is fully done. The other thing that we do that I'm really proud of is we do a third-party audit of all of our herbs. And so if, if we're buying this stuff and they say it's astragalus, we then test it at a lab in Missouri, and they're like, yep, it's astragalus. So number, number one, we try to be very, very transparent. Um, number two, there are all sorts of fads. There are all sorts of just hacks out there, uh, and I don't want to – associate the two, but there, there are some, you know, shadier supplements that are out there and, and that's just kind of a stigma of the industry. Um, a lot of things like, you know, lose 20 pounds in a weekend and whatnot. And, and like, I don't think I would take those if I were you, but, um, at the end of the day, we just try to make it as open and transparent as possible about what we're doing. Um, and we try as much as possible to, tell the story of the heritage much as I have with you, you know, in the last 45 minutes or so. If you start talking about Chinese medicine at a cocktail party or with a bunch of friends, I'm willing to bet that there's somebody in that group that has used Chinese herbs and Chinese medicine um, for pain management, uh, for fertility related issues, or for other sort of stress related issues. Okay. And so it's much more widespread. And it's not as though we talk about, like, you know, I, I was at my acupuncturist today, you know, the way we would with some other sort of behavior patterns. But in, the case of Dow Labs and what we're doing, this is something that's been around. It's, it's just not a fad, you know, and it's 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 not um, something that that is just kind of a, a flash in the pan as it relates to sort of a new trend or whatnot. Um, the other thing that we do, just as a company, because I think it's important, is to the extent we can, we try to explain any research that it's out there. And with our formulas on our website, we do put the research that's available. There aren't clinical studies behinding this stuff with humans yet. And that's something that we aspire to do as a company. But there is a lot of decent research that comes out of, I wouldn't say it's good research that's coming out of 
uh, schools in Hong Kong that's trying to like understand and like begin to peel back the onion as to, to why this stuff works. And so we try to put that all out there front and center and as much we can from an FDA standpoint, not say, well, this is validating that this will, you know, prevent you from getting an influenza, but as much as we can say, all right, this is a 20 page report that was done, um, a scientific study, uh, you know, with this sample size and what we do, do like our products themselves, we try to break it down and explain it. How do you guys acquire customers? Oh man. Uh, besides, besides <laughs> praying every day, I guess <laughs> we do all of the above, man. Um, it's the usual tactics from a marketing standpoint that any sort of CPG would want to do. It's trial, it's influencer marketing, it's advertising. It's all of the things that even though we are a startup and a, a, uh, an e-commerce platform by and large, um, it is at the end of the day, it's an ingestible that people have to try and they have to talk about. And so we do all of the, the things that any sort of food supplement brand should do just to get uh, uh, credibility and sort of a base of business. The other thing we do is we have um, what we call our sort of our, our practitioner ambassador program, where we now have nearly, uh, well, it's over 100 uh, uh, acupuncturists across the, the country that are advocates of Dow Labs. Okay, They are the real influencer for us because they're the ones that have um, the, the training and they have the sort of relationship with the patient that they're able to say, all right, you've been coming to me for a reason. You keep coming to me. So, you know, this stuff works. Um, and they're serving as a mouthpiece for us and, and doing it very enthusiastically and in a very great way, I should say. Um, the last thing that we are very proud of that we've done is, is, um, we've relied on Instagram probably from an, an we've over skewed on it, um, because we're trying to make a, a brand that can be very social. And so if you go to our Instagram feed, uh, a lot of what we're doing is, again, taking something that's very uh, esoteric, very confusing, and trying to build a lifestyle around it, and then use appropriate language to translate what this stuff is. So um, I, I would say that we've done a, a great job, and we're continuing because there's a lot more opportunity to do uh, on, on Instagram to get people in the funnel. So those advocates in, in the, uh, the acupuncturists, uh, they end up becoming your sales force, so they get a cutback of it, or do they just love your products and do it kind of because they want to want to help you guys? No, that's a good question. Uh, it's not so much a cutback as it is. Um, they ultimately then sell our stuff for us. Um, and they get, uh, compensated and it's very upfront. They can either sell it directly or they can refer, uh, their patients back to our website and then they would get a commission off of that. But the average acupuncturist coming out of school can't necessarily hold a wall of supplements and herbs just by virtue of the, the math and the economics behind their, their profession. Um, and so this is a great way for them to uh, ultimately still stock our stuff, but not have to stock too much that so they can't like manage the inventory or it just doesn't work because they can't afford to hold, you know, a bunch of stuff. So at the end of the day though, they got to buy into it. I mean, they're, they're not going to do it just because they think they can make a quick buck. They, they have to subscribe to what we're doing um, and the way we're going about it and be, you know, really enthusiastic and, and not just anybody can do it too, by the way, it's, it, there's a vetting process and, and whatnot. So it's, it's a pretty cool group. You went to the University of Michigan? I did not go to the University of Michigan. I went to uh, Northwestern University, the, uh, the better Big Ten school. Um, and I went there both uh, as an undergrad and then I, uh, I pursued an MBA there as well. Why did half, you go to Michigan? No, I have half my notes wrong then. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. What else do your notes say? And we'll, uh, we'll so Kellogg, we'll... okay. I thought Kellogg was Michigan. I was wrong. Oh, no, that's okay. No, Kellogg's uh, as Northwestern. All right, Northwestern. So Northwestern, so I actually have a journalism degree, and uh, apparently Northwestern is like the greatest of the journalism schools. Um, so I could have gone there. So knowing that uh, I just made a fool of myself for no, no, taking no, no. that one bit of reason. <laughs> no. um, knowing that you went to school many years ago and that the world has changed, like how are you educating yourself now that's different than kind of how you edu were educated collegiately before? That's an interesting question. Um, so let me, let me preface it a, a little bit more then. Yeah. So the internet has really changed a lot of things, right? When I grew up, um, I graduated high school in, in, in 2002. It was very much, and we're not that far away from, from ages. And so when we grew up, like the internet really wasn't a thing growing up. And so now our kids, well, I don't have kids yet, but when I have kids, like, do you think the school system is going to continue to be like that? Like, uh, are we going to be learning in a completely different kind of way? Like, have you started to, to transition to learn a completely different way than, than you grew up? Uh, like, where do you see that kind of world going? 
Well, okay, so a couple of things. Number one, and this is somewhat cliche, but it's not, the world of podcasting, I think has changed so much in terms of our ability to consume information, when we consume it and how we consume it and whatnot, and our ability, like you were saying, on the bike and mine, like when I, the way you <laughs> walk 1,500 miles is you listen to a lot of stuff along the way, and like my playlist ain't that good when it comes to music. So that that is number one in terms of just the ability to like get to people um, that, you know, from a business standpoint to tell their story, like that's just so much more accessible than it was. Um, certainly when I was, uh, an undergrad, I mean, you could pop in a tape or get the occasional, uh, guest lecturer or speaker, but that that's, you know, those walls are, are down entirely. Um, number two, I would say the variety of what we can get and when we can get it is, to, is so broad that it becomes overwhelming at times. And I think that's something that we're going to struggle with in terms of just like, there's just too much coming at us. And then when do you turn off the noise and figure out, all right, you know, what are, what are the basic blocks and tackle blocking and tackling that, that's appropriate for me? You know, it's interesting that, um, you frame the question the way you did, because my two kids are in a Montessori program. Okay. And I'm uh, an alum of, uh, of Montessori. And when I go into that class and look at the way that they are learning, it's the exact same way that it was developed over 100 years ago when Dr. Montessori, and I can't remember her first name, designed it. And, and they had pictures of kids like with the counting beads or with pouring the glasses or walking on the lines and whatnot. And, and I, I think foundationally, tools and curriculums and methodologies like that will still you know, this isn't answering your question, but I think the the, the way we consume it, the, the, the time with which we consume it and whatnot, that's all great and whatnot. And the collaboration, you know, Kellogg is a very big school on, on collaborative learning. And I can't say enough great things about that because at the end of the day, it does take a team and it does take a, a, an interaction of, of multiple people to really make things work. But I, I also think the farther we strut, strut from the roof, roots, we could be getting away to some of the best stuff that's out there. That's, you know, learning to count by beads and, and like cutting carrots and stuff like I learned to do. So it's a long winded answer to it. It's just the way and the, the, the times with which I consume my, 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 my education. Got it. Love it. What's something that you have not done in your life that you want to do business wise, personal life. I want to make a documentary. Uh, on Chinese medicine, and I, I won't uh, hide the ball like that 1992 documentary that I know so well. It, it's ripe to be remade for today. Um, and I actually started at Northwestern as a film major, and I was never, Zach, going to be a film, <laughs> like somebody who can make good movies, but there was a reason that I applied to it, and that's kind of in me. Um, and so I, I want to make a movie that is, um, does uh, basically what I've just tried to do, but in a very visual way. Um, that would be number one. And then number two, as so we talked we, about, so before we get to number two, so what's holding you back to actually start that then? Uh, t time, you know, right now, um, there is a possibility that we're going to start working on it later this summer, if I can squeeze it into the schedule, but it basically comes down to time and, and we'll get it done. Um, cool. but that's a, that's a, to do it right. Going back to the type A type stuff, like to do it right. I want to make sure, you know, we've got, um, the right crew, we've got the right resources, um, that we just do it right. But that's, that is a layup for our, for what I, I want to do. Um, uh, and then on a, on a personal level, uh, you and I had talked about, there's still this itch. I just wrote a book, so that was cool. I, I wrapped that up. And so that, that box is checked. Um, and then, um, as you and I discussed, I still have this itch to swing, swim the English channel. And going back to time, <laughs> you know, that's a, a huge undertaking, but I, I would love to do that. Tell me a little bit about the book. Oh, the, it's great. It's a good book, but it's very, very mundane. Um, I ran a frozen food company before I started uh, uh, this Chinese medicine uh, enterprise. Um, and our, our food company was the least sexy thing in the world. Um, but we were in a lot of retailers in the United States and we went from zero retailers to, um, uh, over 10,000 of them. And it was all through this, um, it was all through trade marketing. Um, and the world of natural foods and supplements right now are exploding with what's out there and, and all sorts of startups that are trying to hack different things and make different things, whatever. But at the end of the day, to get on the shelf, there's some rules of the road, um, that a retailer and a distributor will require you to abide by. And there was never anybody out there that explained to me or to others that I'm aware of how to do it. And it's real unsexy stuff. It's very much blocking and tackling, but it's all things like, 
you know, how do you do temporary price discounts? How do you repay slotting? How do you make sure any sort of a trade marketing plan that a retailer is going to require of you is appropriate for your brand and who you think your target consumers are? And so two years ago, I sat down and just started writing it. And I put it away for a while, and uh, then I picked it back up. And uh, over Christmas of this year, I said to myself, damn it, I'm going to get this thing finished. So it's called the Trade Marketing Field Manual. Um, it's available on Amazon. I just published about three weeks ago. Uh, and it's all about how do you take your brand that you've worked so hard to create and how do you make sure it turns off the shelf? That's basically what it comes down to. And turn, by turn, it means how do you make it sell? Love it. I just wrote a book myself. It's called Anomaly, How to Finally Stand Out from the Crowd. There's a lot of things that you just said in there that remind yeah. me of, of that, type, that type of stuff. And people are like, like, I get the question a lot, very similar question that you just said, but a lot of people are like, oh, I got to build this super sexy thing. And I'm just like, actually, like the way you'll be successful in life is like create a lot of relationships with people. I think those relationships should be treated like a friendship. Yep. Yep. Do all these things that don't scale that are one to one. Yeah. People will start noticing. You'll start to understand those trends. Yeah. And go do stuff like that. If you're trying to make a viral video and you suck at videos, like the video is probably not going to go viral. So you have to use another technique. And so just like you, you, you put a lot of stuff together in this, I did it in mine. So I, I always love, and I didn't know well, that congrats. about you. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to check that out too. No, it's for called, sure. Uh, what's it called? Trade marketing and field manual? It's called the trade marketing field manual. Okay. Um, and I call it the field manual because it's supposed to be a user guide. It's supposed to be very actionable cool. in terms of like, all right, how, how do I get a purchase order from Whole Foods? How do I make sure that it gets right. trial and all that stuff? What's your goal with that? Just to check it off the list? It was to check it off the list, but it had to be told. Like um, it was just in me to like explain to other people because like we made a lot of mistakes and those mistakes were very, very costly. And I was just, I saw the need and yeah, I don't know. It's like I just started writing it and I kept writing it, you know, and hopefully people can learn from it. What is John McGarvey the best in the world at? Oh, geez. Uh, I would say I'm bad at a lot of things. Um, I'm, I'm a great father. Um, and that's so shalalala, but like I'm a kick-ass dad and I take such pride in doing that and being that. And, um, um, that, that's the first thing that came to mind. So there's that component. Um, I'm a good communicator. I, I, I think I'm good at talking and I'm good at storytelling. Um, and had we had more time and more hours, I could go even deeper and, and, and more enthusiastic on some of the things that we talked about. So, you know, as I get later in life, what am I good at? What am I not good at? Those are, those are two of them.